So now we're out on the trap line for the uh, second part of this these videos. Um, we're kind of going to go over actually setting a trap, uh, some details here and there, precautions to take depending on what you're trapping, what to look for, stuff like that. Um, we got Levi with me. Hi. Um, uh, first thing is is never set a trap without some kind of sign. Um, unless you've actually seen an animal, you see some, you know, cat scratch back, coyote trap, fox trap, cat crap, fox crap, um, whatever it might be, never set a trap blind. Um, set a, set the trap where where they are, not where not where you want them to be, not where you think they'd be. Set them where they actually are. You can waste a lot of time and resources trapping some of the best looking places um, because you think they should be there for whatever reason you think they've got to be there. Do not set unless you know there's, unless you have confirmed sighting or you see some kind of sign. This particular spot, um, we just pulled game camera pictures from a camera I had left over in deer season. This is one of my deer hunting spots also. We've got two coyotes on, on camera here in about the last week and uh, I know pretty much where they're running right here, so we're going to go ahead and, and set a trap for them down this little branch right here and uh, see what we can't catch. On this one I used a little bit too much wire to tighten up. Part of the reason with that one is this wire had already been used and uh, I wanted to make sure I get a good hold and one of them had been shortened already. So, But like I was saying, since this is here on a pine, there's no have a lot of in it, we're going to grab it right there at the base and we're going to rotate it the same direction you twist your wire. If you do it too much, you can actually twist your wire off, but do it too much good and snug. You'll feel it cinch up on that on the piece of wood there. I like to do it that. I set my drag up up against parallel with whatever I'm setting against. If it's, if it's a dirt hole, I'll use it a little longer chain or longer wire to get the drag back behind that. So now I'm going to pick where I want my trap. This particular spot. I want my trap right here. So I'm going to pull back you know, whatever's covering the ground there, whether it be grass or leaves or what have you. And I'm going to chop out the ground in the shape of Crap. You want about an inch and a half to it. You don't want it too deep, but you don't want it too shallow. You want it deep enough that, uh, that your trap's not going to be sticking up, but you want it shallow enough that your trap's not going to be down even the ground. You want your pan to be even with the surface. So now that I've got that, depending on what side my my chain's gonna come off of. I'm gonna just put a light little, almost a trail for it to go in the ground. Well, the reason I like these hatchets is chop roots out real easy. Now, what I was talking about earlier with this swivel coming off the bottom being the only thing that's not good about Victor's is it causes your trap to not want to set evenly in the hole. It makes it want to wobble. That's probably one of the most important things when you're setting a trap is you want it to set. You want it to, you don't want any movement in the hole. You want it to be bedded firmly. Um, that is a is a huge a huge difference in catching an animal or missing an animal. Is that right there? Um, this right, this particular trap's offset jaws. I know some places you have to have them. Some places you don't. A lot, most of my traps are offset jaws just because it it will automatically uh, look at the worm. A lot of my traps are are offset jaws because it will you know you, you know that you're good to go no matter where you're at. I think it really don't make much of a difference in terms of of uh, of catches as long as you're actually doing everything else right. If you're you know, making sure you don't have any rocks or sticks that can get caught right here. This is a problem. So now we're going to set our trap. Like I said, I run all my pans loose. 
Um, something I did forget to mention in the last video, if you got a new trap, I actually filed my dog off right there. You can see it's a lot smoother. It creates a faster, smoother movement for your pan. Uh, this trap's very, as you can see, it's really hair triggered. You want when you set your trap, you want your pan to set about even with your jaws, maybe just a hair higher, but you don't want it to set real low either. Like I mentioned in the previous video, I like my traps really hair triggered. I know that a lot of people will preach otherwise, but like I said, I think you're kind of getting into a, a round and round thing when you do that. As you can see, this trap, it's firm. So this, that chain on the bottom of Victor can, can cause it. This has a little bit of wobble, but it's pretty firm. But mostly due to where that chain is off the bottom center. What I'll do is I'll take my hatchet, and I'll put a little hole in the ground there for it to set, and we'll actually firm it up real nice. So there's no wobble to it at all. If your trap wobbles in the hole, you will miss. That, that is the biggest reason that, that goes behind missing missing animals. So then you'll take your leftover dirt here, put over the ears of your trap, over your chain, uh, cover up your wire. Leave I shine over here, or shine film over there. Cover up your wire. I like to make it pretty high where it's almost like a natural barrier to where if, if it's a top set, something can go around it to make it where it's gonna kind of deter them from going around the back of the set. So now we're at this point. Let me see how they go. Now we're at this point right here. Um, this is where what I do is different from almost everybody else, and I will argue it every day of the week that this is better. Most people tend to use dirt to cover their traps up. I firmly believe that uh, that's not the best way to go. I used to use dirt. Um, one problem with it where, where I live is it, it tends to rain a lot. And it'll thaw and get wet and muddy and it'll freeze and thaw and freeze and thaw. So you're back and forth and always, you know, the dirt's always messing messing your traps up. Um, with dirt, you got to carry uh, pads for your pans. Um, so th there's that. And then also back to the, to the rain thing and, and just moisture in general. Um, you know, dirt, dirt holds moisture and moisture holds scent. So if the, the less moisture you can have on that trap that you handled, the less scent you're going to have as far as being dug up or, or a, you know, spooking a coyote or a fox or anything like that. So this is where my method will differ quite a bit. Um, what I'll actually do is I carry a pair of scissors. And every trap I have, even if it's, if it's in a dirt area, I'll still do this and I'll just camouflage it in a little bit. So I've got my set. So right here, depending on my surroundings, um, I use different stuff. But right here, I'll use a mixture of pine needles and leaves. Leaves aren't real good, so I'll try to use predominantly pine needles, but leaves to blend it in. Um, uh, one thing that I think is kind of one thing that is kind of important to note is that. Uh, the softer the grass, the better. So you don't want you don't want real stalky grass or real kind of stiff grass or anything like that. Um, now we're going to cover this set. So you, pine needles work good, but they tend to to not want to they they want to fall through your trap. So you can cut them a little longer, but I always take it stuff. I fold it over, and you just start cutting. You want to cut about one inch sections. And a lot of people want to overcover their traps. You don't have to completely cover your trap up. All that does is make it, especially if it starts to freeze, it makes the trap hard, harder to, makes the jaws, it gives a slower reaction time, which goes back to the, the pan tension versus good catch debate again. Um, so you just lightly have to cover it, because remember, you know where the trap is. That animal don't. He's not looking for that trap. He's look, trying to find what your bait and everything else, if you've got it right. So once you get all your stuff cut, kind of make everything look right. So it's okay if you can still see your trap. You can still we can still see the dog and the jaw and the pan, and that's okay. But what these leaves and pine needles are going to do, 
or grass, what I usually like to use, a, a, some type of dead grass, what that's going to do is hold less scent than dirt. And, uh, and, and it's going to make it where you're less likely to get dug up. Now where I am going to contradict myself just a little bit, I will get a small bit of dirt and I'll sprinkle it on my set, just barely. But I want it to all stay on top. The reason for that is that dirt's going to hold the leaves down, hold the pine needles down. That way any small breeze isn't going to blow them off. So now Levi, back up here. Now we'll put our bait down. Um, I'll just take a, a bottle, take a small stick, put in there. And you want it, you know, just kind of use your head on, depending on a lot of different things, wherever, when his nose is on that bait, think of where his foot's going to be. So I'm just going to throw it right up in there. It's about six to eight inches um, from my set. And actually one thing I completely forgot to mention that's very, very important. You always want to make sure, I know you've heard me talk about the dog, which is a part of the trap right there that your pan actually attaches to. The dog needs to always be to the back of your set. So you never want the dog to where the entrance, say if, 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 if it's a walkthrough and it's gonna be sideways, you never want the dog on the entrance or on the outside or the exit as far as that goes. You always want it to the back of the set because if he steps on that dog, that's gonna cause issues with that trap going off. So you don't want him to step on the dog. You want, you want the dog to always be to the back. Um, that's another reason that people tend to get a lot of misses. Um, you know, you can see that, that you can still see this trap, but it's it's camouflaged well. So I, I know I'm jumping around on some, some topics as far as back and forth, but but it does really make a difference. The the grass versus the dirt and the dog and stuff like that. That's there's a lot of small things that that over time actually make a difference in catches and misses. So um, now the state the state we're in, it is legal to, to flag to use. To use feathers so we are going to throw some feathers down i think that's um for cats it's more important for canines i think it's equally equally important as the scent so what we're going to do is i'm going to get some up high so i'm going to rub some on this tree i mean it don't it don't take much as you can see that's just a few feathers there um the rest of them we're going to put back here around the bait behind the set where it's not going to force him to go one way or the other but it's going to be able to it's kind of where our bait is so you've got a flag if he can see it he'll come in but it's obvious where you want him to go so we're going to direct his attention there now one thing that I'll always do is I'll try to make an entrance and exit to my set I generally don't set a lot of blind sets unless I'm having a, a problem fox or a problem coyote that repetitively digs me up so here we're going to use this to make an entrance and an exit. Uh, rocks are best if you can small, small pieces of wood, log, whatever it might be. Uh, and you're going to set it right even with your outside jaw. Or if I wanted it to be the other way, I'd set it wherever, but I want my entrance and exit to be this way. So I'm going to set that even with my outside jaw. Remember, your dog always goes to the back side. Now I'm going to give him a stepping stick. I don't like guide sticks much. I, I think, like I said in the in the last video, you know, I don't think animals are gonna really fully commit often. So I think guide sticks are kind of forcing them to go. But just something like a stepping stick that's gonna, they're not gonna step on it. It's gonna make it where they're gonna put their, their foot on that pan or either step just long or just shy of that stick. So what I'll try to do is, it really don't matter as far as um, the entrance or the exit. Sometimes I'll do a double step and stick, but not often. Usually I'll just do one. I'll try to guess what side I'd, I'd say he'd enter from, and this, I think it'd be the right. So you wanna put it about midway where that ear of your trap's gonna be. So you don't want it over the jaws, you don't want it to get caught the jaws. You don't want it too far in where that ear is gonna throw it up into the jaws. But you want a stick big enough that it's definitely prominent and noticeable to them but you don't want one too big that, that if it did get stuck in the jaws in the worst case scenario that it would, would cause your jaws to hang open. So you want it about midway over that ear, works best. And actually that is it. So so you can see, see the set we got there. Um, 
He's either gonna step just shy or just short of that stick. Your dog to the back side. No wobble in the hole. Got a good drag. Um, one thing that, that I, I didn't mention, that if you're, if you're really targeting canines, um, if you're primarily targeting fox, coyote, stuff like that, um, it's, it's probably smart to get a kneeling pad. Something that works really, really well for that is, uh, come on, Levi. Something that works really well for that is actually uh, just an inner tube that you cut into a square. It, it works well. I, I generally don't use a kneeling pad because I, I target cats. Now, I do set for fox and coyotes, but I usually just wear rubber boots and, uh, and try to keep my knees off the ground as much as I can. If you're a if you're going to be a hardcore canine trapper and that's what you're after, that's your goal. Well, in that case, I would highly recommend an Elam pad to cut down on your scent. Uh, that's that on that set. We're going to jump on the side by side, drive around, maybe set another. Um, it's actually pretty late in the season. It's last week of January. Um, we've already been trapping quite a bit, but we're kind of just setting these to have fun now. Um, so we'll see. We might might film a few more sets here today and uh and we won't be near as in depth on them but we'll just kind of show the overview of setting the whole thing one thing when you're well, if you're an outdoorsman, I guess you probably do it already, but especially when you become a trapper, your attention to detail changes a lot. Um, when you're driving over any kind of creek washout, puddle, um, literally anything, you get a lot more keen to sign. I mean, you, you be driving 40 mile an hour down the highway and recognize a one centimeter by four inch piece of crap on the side of the road and be able to say, hey, that was bobcat crap, or you see a little half puddle of crap hey that was fox crap 14 foot off the road back there it helps trapping helps more with your tracking skills on other other types of hunting than any other thing so when you see stuff like this if you're looking for sets you know looking for places to set traps um like i said earlier it's it's not about where you think they are where what looks good where they should be it's about where they actually are i thought this was a good opportunity to talk about that i've actually um you know, in the past or at this exact spot on up the road about 100 yards right there to the right, I thought, man, that looked phenomenal. And uh, set a trap there, just, you know, going against my own, my own logic. And uh, I thought that was the best looking spot I'd ever seen. And I put a trap there for, ran it for the better part of three months and caught like two possums. Um, so we're not going to set anything here. There's not any tracks here, but, but so what I wanted to say is if when you see things that it's opportunity for sign it is of the utmost importance to uh, thoroughly inspect them to say the least to find sign. Coyote running down the road. See if we can find where he goes. This tracks going along right here. So we've seen those coyote tracks before we go where he was walking down the road. I um, was able to see where he came in at right here. It's actually a pretty good trail side of the road. Uh, see right there, going into that thick brush. A lot of times that stuff's phenomenal. So. But, just because it looks phenomenal don't mean it is. We've got signs, so we're going to make another set here. Let's see if we can't catch something. It's got enough knots in it. We're not going to have to worry about uh, cinching it down with a pair of pliers or anything. I don't know 
if I mentioned it a while ago, but something else that's good about the using grass compared to dirt is the, the grass don't freeze. If you get a big rain or something like that, you can uh, you don't have to worry about about your traps right after it starts freezing over. The trap sits good in that hole. You can feel the voids back in. That way if they step on the side they're not sinking into anything and it's kind of alerting them to something abnormal. One thing you do want to make sure is that the dirt you're putting back in don't have any rocks or anything in it. It'll mess your jaws up when, the, when they go off, it gets caught in them. Uh, I know I was talking about good grass while ago. This kind of grass right here, whatever this stuff is, man, this stuff is phenomenal. I'm not going to use this immediately on my trap reach back here and get some but if you get the not the top stalks but the stuff underneath man that stuff's good put it back on the trap leave so I'm gonna cut it off cut it out that's that's more than enough grass so the rest of it I'll kind of blend make everything else blend in so I'll get a stick you can kind of smooth it out, make it look right, look natural. Like I said, you don't have to just put a ton of it in there. Remember, they don't know the trap's there. Just want to get a little bit of dirt on top to hold it down. Make sure you don't have any rocks or anything like that in it. Put our bait down. I like having the bait kind of in those grass balls like that. It kind of helps if it's raining, you can utilize them to kind of cover it up, cover it with a leaf, whatever. We're gonna cover our, our wire, our chain up. I should've done that at the beginning. Now we're just gonna step and stick. This one's a little big, but I'm gonna put it a little bit farther away to kind of counteract that. Get our feathers out. Once again, right around where your bait is, where you want most of them, then you want some up high. These little bushes like this, these work really good for holding feathers and stuff. Kind of like that. How to bring him in from the road. He won't be able to resist it. That's a good set. Good job, Levi. A couple days later, we're, uh, me and Levi's running traps pretty late at night. We got we got out of work late. Uh, this is the second set we set in the video of the of the two we showed. This is the second one. Uh, got us a uh, I can get on him here. Got us a coyote. Pretty good looking, pretty good looking dog. He uh, kind of dark colored. Uh, pales tend to do better, but he's he's a good looking coyote. We're gonna get him took care of. Didn't plan on on filming this, but I figured if figured it'd be good good part to add into the video for the second part there, where we're setting the traps and uh, kind of be able to correlate a catch with a set. later here forgot to mention <coughs> oh, where's he at Hi. got Levi with me uh, run another trap we set a five that day that, that we filmed the the uh, well, I guess the same video that we filmed this video uh, this is number four that was number two a while ago uh, so far of the 
four sets we've had two possums which which comes along back with the panties thing i was talking about and you do get into that but uh we got another coyote here now not bad going uh in one run going all in all four for five shoot i can't find him there we go another coyote like i said this makes two for five so two for five coyotes and the other three had two possums but uh, that's this is our last one for the night we're gonna head back to the house but go ahead and wrap this video up but like i said if uh if you think these videos are any good or or you want to see more general shenanigans we're going to try to do a video about once a week and uh if nothing else just for documenting the videos i think levi wants to say something so i actually i don't really need glasses i'm just wearing these because i didn't want to get bugs in my eyes on the dry field because anyways like we do with about like, like 10 miles from here so i didn't want to get bugs in my eyes words of wisdom to depart with if you are driving a long ways in side by side Wear glasses so you don't get bugs, mud, and wind in your eyes. Y'all have that. a good day.